Hello everyone, today we will be discussing fractions and just a couple of things we'll be going over said we've put in here below. So we'll talk about reducing fractions, lowest common denominators, and mixed numbers along with a couple of other pretty cool fraction things. Alright, so let's get started. So what is a fraction? A fraction is a, represents part of something, part of a whole thing, and can be divided, anything that can be divided into equal parts. So what do I mean by that? So let's say we had a pizza, and I divided it into one pizza into four parts. Okay, so that means that there are four pieces of pizza. Now, if there are, let's say, four people, how many pieces of pizza would that each person get? Or how much of the whole pizza would each person get? Well, we could say they get one out of four pieces. And here's a fraction. Okay, so what this means is this shaded in area here is one out of four pieces. Okay, so fractions um, can be described, as I said, anything can be divided into equal parts. As we see here, there's four equal parts, and we can represent one part of those four equal parts by using this fraction. Now, if we bring up that fraction again, one over four. Okay, so the top number here represents the specific amount of a whole item, and we call this the numerator. The numerator. Okay, and then our bottom piece here represents the number of, number of equal parts into which a whole item has been divided. So if you remember our pizza, we divided into four pieces, which is why our four is at the bottom. Okay, and we call this the denominator. So you might hear me call these just the num and the denom, but I'll try to use the full word so that no one gets confused. Then the last thing to just talk about in this setup is this right here. So this, the line in between is our division line. And it shows that the numerator, the top number, is divided by the bottom number. So what this fraction really says is 1 divided by 4. That's what our fraction actually says. So a couple of other examples of a fraction. You could say 1 over 2, 3 over 4, 3 over 8, 4 over 12. And notice how I'm saying over. That's the same thing as saying divided by. So 4 divided by 12. Okay, so that all means the same thing. Now a couple things to remember. Our denom, our denominator, denominator, there we go, cannot equal 0. Now why is this? That would be saying, say if I had 4 divided by 0. So if we remember what we called these up here, our numerator and denominator, we said that this 4 is describes, this bottom number describes how many pieces the whole item has been divided into. Now if we're saying the denominator is equal to 0, we're saying that a whole pizza hasn't been divided into any pieces. Now if I weren't cut to cut a pizza at all and leave it like this, I still have one piece. So I can't have zero pieces. And that's why we can't have a denominator of zero. So another couple, another couple things to remember is if I have something, we'll stick with four, four divided by one is equal four. Two divided by two is equal two. So from this, we can assume that any number divided by 1 is equal to that same number. Okay? Now, 
speaking of one, we can then take two divided by two. We know two goes into two one time. Four divided by four, four goes into four one time. So then from here we can mark the conclusion that a number divided by the same number, so these two are the same, is equal to one. Always. That is another rule that we cannot forget. A number divided by itself is always going to be one. So a couple other things. We can have proper and we can have improper fractions. So what does this mean? Okay, so a proper number, a proper fraction. The numerator has to be smaller than the denominator. Ooh. Denom. Okay, so that's gonna look like, we've talked about one over two, three over four, even 72 over 73. Those are all proper fractions because this top number and all of them is less than the bottom numbers. Okay, so one is less than two, three is less than four, 72 is less than 73. Now if we head over to the improper side, this is when our numerator is it greater than our denominator. So that looks like three over two, five over four, 107 over 99. Okay, again, when this top number is greater than the bottom number. So right, three is greater than two, five is greater than four, 107 is greater than 99. Okay. Now in fractions, we can also have a whole number. So remember our whole numbers. One, two, three, all the way up to forever. Okay, so we can have a whole number mixed with the fraction. So that would be like one and one half, or seven and four over nine. So this is our whole number part mixed with a fraction. Okay, and you notice how I say the word mixed? So these are called mixed numbers. And we're gonna talk about those a little later on, but I just thought I'd touch on them quick now so we can recall that information later. So first, what I wanna talk about next is finding the least common denominator of a fraction. So to add and subtract function fractions, we first off need to have the same denominator in both fractions or all fractions. You get the point, denominator. Okay, so if the fractions do not have the same denominator, we have the ability to convert their denominators to be the same so we can do that addition and subtraction. So say I have five over six and I wanna add six over nine. Six and nine are not the same, so there's a way for us to convert these to be the same so that I can add these together. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. We're first gonna talk about how we can do that, and that's from computing the lowest common denominator, or LCD. So, to compute this, if you remember, we talked about computing and finding the lowest common multiple of a couple of numbers. And to find the lowest common denominator, we can use the same methods as finding the lowest common multiple. Okay, so if I wanted to find the LCD of one over three and one over six. Now, remember, lowest common denominator, we're focusing on the fact that of our denominators. So I have three and I have six. Okay, so what do we do for lowest common multiple? We look at those multiples. Three. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, all the way up. Same thing for six. Six, 12, 18, 24, forever and ever. And remember, we had to find the lowest common multiple 
the lowest common multiple is 6. So we've done that. So believe it or not, the lowest common multiple is 6, but that is also our lowest common denominator. Okay? Now, why do we need to find the lowest common denominator? Well, I already talked about how we want to find the LCD so we can add and subtract fractions together, but we also might want to find the LCD because it'll give us the simplest answer. So in this case, we can see that 3 and 6 also have a common denominator or a common multiple of 12. We could use 12 if we were to add these two together, but that's going to give us a fraction that we're going to have to reduce, and we'll talk about reducing next, reduce into a smaller fraction to get the smallest answer. Okay, so let before we go into reducing, let's talk about a couple more examples here. So I want to find the lowest common denominator, 1 over 6, Ooh, we won't use the at, and we don't want to, 7 over 15. Using this, not an addition sign, because I don't want to confuse anybody. Okay, so again, the same thing. I'm just grabbing these two numbers, 6, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, blah, 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 15, 15, 30, 45, forever and ever and ever. Okay, so looking here, 30 is the lowest common multiple, so the lowest common denominator is also 30. Right, pretty, pretty straightforward there. One more example for the lowest common denominator. I want to find the LCD of 3 over 4, 2 over 3, and 1 over 2. Now you might think, whoa, there's three numbers here. I don't know what I'm doing now. Again, we're just looking at denominators. And we're doing the same thing. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and forever and ever, 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and so on, 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and forever and ever and ever. Now again, same thing, right? We're just trying to find that lowest common multiple. So if we're looking here, between 4 and 3, our lowest common multiple is 12. And we want to double check that 2 has the same. 2 also has 12. So since it's in all three places, our lowest common denominator is equal to 12. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is reducing fractions. And I talked about that a little bit earlier on how reducing fractions would help us find the simplest answer. And that's basically what it is. It's for when we have a fraction that's not in lowest terms, we like to say. And what that means is that the denominator and the numerator do have common factors, so we can make the fraction smaller. 